Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of this newsletter is going to be, she needed to think things out. Well, it's never a good thing when a woman says that to you. I got an email here from a viewer, and he says, let me first say you are amazing. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. I've read your book and watched some of your videos. My problem is with a past girlfriend from college. We broke up and remained friends for about six years. Not the kind of friend that you actively pursue, but the kind of friend you casually encounter and with whom you chit-chat a bit. After all of this time, she entered the same university in which I'm making my PhD, and she's getting a master's. We reconnected and been dating for almost six months now. We started slow, so she eventually started saying things like, I haven't liked someone this much in years. I adore you and stuff like that. That was a good sign. That definitely meant that her level of attraction and interest for you was going in the right direction at that particular time. And as I discuss in my book, it doesn't really matter what you did six months ago or six weeks ago or yesterday or the day before. The only thing that matters is how you're showing up right now because that's how it affects a woman's emotion and level of attraction for you, either in the, in the positive direction or in the negative direction. He says, nonetheless, we haven't committed to monogamy, which is fine. It just might get there in the future. No big deal. He says, the problem started a month and a half ago when she went out with an ex of hers that has been chasing her for about two years. I knew he was going to screw things. He always does. So I just held back and I waited. After a week, she contacted me and we had a couple of dates. And the second one, we went to a party and I got completely drunk. Probably not a good idea. I can tell there's probably what happens afterwards is not good. <laughs> he says, so she went all insecure and said she needed to think things out. An ex of hers is an alcoholic. Well, that's definitely not helpful if she had an ex-boyfriend that was an alcoholic because what happens is you go and you get drunk like that and it's not so much the act of you getting drunk that's the problem. It's all of the negative emotions about the ex-boyfriend that it triggers when she sees you in that particular state that she used to see her ex-boyfriend pretty much all of the time. And it might have been amusing at first but obviously it gets old really quick. So he says, I tried to joke the problem out and talk, talk to her sometime in the same week, but I guess she was really pissed. It's just obviously she was emotionally upset, and who knows? I mean, I, you didn't have said what you said to her. Maybe you were a total jackass to her. I mean, who knows? But obviously the bottom line is it did not help your case. It didn't cause her interest in you to continue going up. So it was going up great, and then you just drove it in the other direction. And the other thing with, an ex, with another guy that's ch chasing her, then obviously you're basically screwing yourself up and taking yourself out of the competition. And so she starts thinking, well, hey, maybe this other guy isn't so bad. And plus, you said yourself, you guys aren't exclusive. And that's when she starts to think, well, you know, I, I do have other options here. Maybe I should see what this other dude is all about. He says, maybe her ex entered the scene again also. I don't know. So I waited until she contacted me again two weeks later or so. You got to remember, it's like you're dating an ex-girlfriend of yours. And so you had a lot of history together. But you also broke up at one point in the past for reasons that you haven't disclosed here. But at the end of the day... When you go back to a relationship that ended, the same reasons are still there that you got turned off to begin with. And eventually at some point, those things are going to come up because people don't change. They'll become better versions of themselves, but at the end of the day, they are who they are. And so whatever it was about you that she didn't like before or whatever it was about her that you didn't like before, it's still there. And plus, you've been dating for six months and you're not exclusive after six months, so that tells me that you've been there's a lot of other things that you've been screwing up in because if you had gotten back together you dated the girl for six whole months and she still wasn't head over heels in love with you and wasn't asking you to be exclusive with her then that tells me that there's other things that you're doing wrong in the courtship that's that's turning her off and probably things that you're not even sure of or aware of because you're probably not very familiar with my work yet or my book so i say you got to read it 10 to 15 times because there's so many little things 
to, that you can do to screw up, just like you going out and getting drunk. That was one night. It was one occurrence. But it was a colossal fuck-up. It was a colossal blunder. And so that started the the tailspin or the, the death spiral of your relationship, basically. He says, when we met, I was kind of indifferent. She dumped me after all, but I was in a good mood. Eventually, she started kissing me, and I playfully said, stop. She told me that she missed me, and so... The thing you got to keep in mind, it's always about the emotions. It's not so much what you say to a woman, but it's exactly how you make her feel. And so you're hanging out and having a good time together, and she was feeling good. And so even though she said the things that she said, basically dumping you again, she still started kissing you and fooling around with you. Because it's not about the relationship or the boundaries or the commitment. It's all about how you make her feel in every single interaction that you're together with her. And the idea is that when you're together with a girl, you want her to be feeling positive emotions, positive feelings, moving in the right direction towards you. And you want to be doing as few things as possible to turn her off. And obviously, you just simply, again, have done more things to turn her off than turn her on. And that's why things are the way they are. He says, that week she texted me some times and I arranged a date with her for Friday. Yesterday I texted her to recommend her one cool article. I told her I was going to give it to you before, but you were too bitchy. And he says, Joe, Joe, Joe. I don't know what that's supposed to mean. I don't know if that's... I don't know what that is, but you're joking with her. And so she thanked me for the article but called me a jerk. So obviously your joke didn't go over too well. That's why I say you got to be real careful at what you text. And at the end of the day, if you have a definite date with a girl, why are you sending her an unnecessary text? That's why I say in between dates you don't contact them. There's no reason to. There's no reason for it. In this particular case, you thought you were being cute and funny and you fucking pissed her off. And so he said, and then so this is what happens. You piss her off, and then he, he says, so she canceled our date and rescheduled it for next Monday because a male friend of hers invited her to something related to a project they were working on. Well, that right there in and of itself, it's like she's punishing you, and obviously she doesn't feel that there's really any consequences for jerking you around and blowing you off on a Friday night. Instead of hanging out with her lover, she's going to ha go hang out with some other dude and work on a project. That tells me that she's, re I mean, she's really not into you or your relationship. And at the end of the day, she had dumped you a few days before. So, so I keep saying the phone is for setting appointments, it's for setting dates. And you're totally fucked up by sending her a text when you had a definite date with set with her. So if you'd had done nothing and just showed up for the date, everything would have been great. And now you create all this drama and this, this problem in your relationship totally unnecessarily. He says, I told her, no problem, we'll meet later. She said we could hang out on Monday or any day of the week. I must admit I got a bit mad and I said calmly that I wasn't available up until next Friday. And she answered me in a cold manner to call her if I was available. So it sounds like now you're just fucking jerking around and playing games and, and trying to get back at her for jerking you around Friday night and that's blowing up in your face. He says, I'm a very busy guy. Besides, I'm a PhD student, I'm a screenwriter, and I'm also a teacher. But I know I could easily make her some space in the week. Am I overreacting? She just ditched me out of her weekend, considering also that she was acting distant, that she dumped me, and so on. Yeah, I mean, the point being is that you did a bunch of things that led to your getting rejected this second time around. And so... You you were you talked about getting together Friday, and then she says, well, give me a call. So that tells me you got off the phone without making a definite date, and you just kind of left things up in the air. And if I were you, you got to keep in mind, this girl's dumped you. She's just totally disrespected you, blew you off to hang out with some other dude, and you're, you're making unnecessary mistakes here. But, I mean, you did what you did, and you are where you are. And this girl's dumped you once again, and she's hanging out with some other guy. A man who perceives himself as a catch is not going to tolerate that. He's just simply going to make plans with somebody else. Besides, you already dated this girl for a long period of time. You know what she's like. You know what she's all about. How about you take the things that I teach in my book and in my videos and my articles and apply it with some other women so you can get some choices, so you can have some options instead of totally being focused on this 
one particular girl because obviously you're still making a lot of mistakes with her. And as time goes by and you continue to screw up like this, it's going to get harder and harder and harder for you to overcome all of the bad things that you've done in the past and you basically get to the point where you've turned her off and she pretty much wants nothing to do with you from that point on. So if I were you, I wouldn't text her, I wouldn't call her, even though you kind of talked about Friday. It's like, fuck it, go do something else. Be busy doing something else with your life, your life and forget about this particular girl. And when she does reach out to you next, make a definite date and get off the phone and stop the bullshit texting in between the dates. And it sounds like to me the reason you were texting her on the day of your date and the joke that went sideways on you was that you really didn't have a definite date in the first place. You were just looking for a reason to reach out to her. But like I said, the phone is for setting appointments. It's not for giving out information. It's not for chit-chatting. It's not for setting dates. And you screwed yourself royally here by just making some really simple blunders that I talk about in my book that you never should do. So when you do hear from her, make a definite date and stay off the phone until you have the date. But I wouldn't call her, I wouldn't text her, I wouldn't reach out to her, I wouldn't do anything with this particular girl at all because she totally disrespected you, dude. So start applying this stuff and meet some other women and get some choices. So if you've got a question you want to ask me, go to my website, click the Contact Me tab, which will be on the left-hand side of your screen, and send me one to two paragraphs max, and just give me several days to get back to you with a response. If you want to talk to me right away, the quickest way to get my help is to book a paid phone coaching session. You can do that by going to my website, click the Products tab, which will be at the top of your screen, and just follow the instructions. If you want to get a digital version of my Kindle ebook on my website underneath the email sign-up box, is a box that has a link that will take you right to the Amazon download page. Once you get there, if you don't have a Kindle device already, all you have to do is download a free e-reader app for your smartphone, tablet device, or your computer. There's a button on the page you can do that. It only takes a matter of seconds to download and install the app and complete the purchase of my book. And if you appreciate the value of the information I offer in these video newsletters, the articles on my website and my e-book, you can show your appreciation by going to my website and on the Wibia toolbar, which is at the bottom of your screen, click the PayPal Donate button and donate any amount that you feel is equal to the value of the information. And I will talk to you soon.